On the Magic Sandwich Show, 23rd of January 2011, the caller made an interesting, if flawed and almost unintelligible point. The caller, Andy Jack, you know, the one who Aaron Ra responded to fruitlessly a while back, well, he was a little emotional, to the point of shouting on several occasions. Others came to the conclusion that he was a little bit drunk. He was insistent that he talked to Aaron Ra directly, but he brought up points that Aaron Ra had already answered. Then he brought up a point that, well, let's see. All right, fair enough, but, but there had to be something there in the first place, whether it's energy or whatever, to make the Big Bang. I mean, that is, that is pretty obvious. Something went bang, whatever it was, okay. Something had to be there to go bang in the first place, and then before that, obviously, something had to be there. But this is the latest thing, guys, okay? Lawrence Krauss, Phoenix University, Arizona. Happy Cabby knows about this, probably. He lives in the same city. What? He said the universe was nothing, but nothing actually weighs something. How does that work? Nothing actually weighs something, okay? This is Lawrence Krauss, okay? I say, so there was something there, it was weight. He went on to say, nothing isn't nothing anymore. Nothing is a virtual boiling brew of particles which are popping in and out of existence on a time scale that's so short we can't see them. That's the only reason why you can't see them, because they ain't fucking there. Typical. As you can hear, he's taken an exception to Lawrence Krauss's suggestion that quantum fluctuations may have been the origin of the singularity from which the universe emerged. In short, he feels that these quantum fluctuations don't exist. He is, in short, wrong. Well, thanks for what now, object. Quantum or vacuum fluctuations are virtual particles that pop in and out of existence on minuscule timescales. As Anley rightly, oddly enough, pointed out, this means we can't observe them directly. So, how do we know they exist? Mathematically, we know that this vacuum energy must exist due to an extension of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, the energy-time uncertainty principle. This is a key tenet of quantum physics which states, in layman's terms, that to measure the energy accurately you have to take measurements over a relatively long time scale. This makes a statement that for a small time scale field X has definite energy E impossible. The vacuum energy is therefore a necessity for the universe to keep it from breaking this rule. It could be said that the universe itself creates these virtual particles in empty space to stop itself from breaking the rule. This is because you cannot say that free space is empty and has no energy. This is in clear violation of the uncertainty principle on short timescales. Thus the free space between matter is said to be filled with energies in the form of these virtual particles. Experimentally, these virtual particles can be shown to exist via the Casimir effect. This is where two uncharged metallic plates are placed very close together without an external magnetic field acting on them. Classically, no force should act on the plates. However, a force is observed acting on the plates, and quantum electrodynamics shows this to be virtual particles, specifically virtual photons. That's not to say that quantum physics for this is without its problems, but considering that 73% of the mass energy of the universe is dark energy, and vacuum energy as a cosmological constant to explain this is well regarded as a solution, plus the fact that these virtual particles are mathematically necessary due to the uncertainty principle, it's ridiculous to dismiss them as non-existent when you clearly don't understand why they are proposed in the first place. Thanks for watching, and any feedback is appreciated. The point is, it, we can't measure virtual particles directly, but we can measure their effects indirectly. And in fact, they're responsible for the best predictions in physics. 